What difference does geography make to philosophy? Thinking is, is, is essentially contextual. It's essentially uh, bound to uh, uh, time and place, and it responds to time and place. Well, of course there's a relationship between geography and philosophy. I think the idea of disembodied or ahistorical philosophy is a, is a very puzzling uh, idea if you look at it. Uh, why shouldn't uh, people's histories and environment and so forth be uh, an integral part of their thinking? I mean, one of the interesting aspects about uh, looking into Native American thought and uh, culture is just how sensitive it is to the, the actual physical in, in environment, a living environment, that it's, it's a very personalized environment. And uh, I think uh, you, you can talk about American philosophy in terms of a history, a family history of the exploration of philosophical ideas uh, in, in the process of the American experience um, here. I think that there is not necessarily a, a collection of wholly original insights, especially taken individually, but rather there's a combination of these insights with an experience that articulates a worldview, and the worldview really is identifiably American. Now, if you are going to do fine-tuned work, and your, your job is to find the core essence of American philosophy, uh, it's going to disappear on you. Uh, the closer you look, the more the differences are going to stand out. So American philosophy is a very complex and multiple set of ways of, uh, of thinking. But for the most part, they're identifiable and uh, though not unique. They're open to us to understand and to identify and to get to know. That doesn't mean that you can't do American philosophy elsewhere or that American philosophy can't do other forms of philosophy that have come from elsewhere, but I do think you that certain places open up certain themes and certain questions perhaps more than, than others. I think it would be very hard to understand someone like Emerson or Thoreau outside of the American context. We creatures of the big brain and the big ideas so easily get caught up in these floating abstractions and drift away from actual situatedness in the world around us, the hick et nunc that here and now that Hegel wanted to get to, uh, for example. Um, so place is extraordinarily important for a philosopher. Analytic philosophy tends to downplay the situatedness of knowledge pursuits. There's this uh, quest for objectivity and depersonalization this fear of relativism, then it's just my opinion, and the only reason I'm saying this is because I'm located in this particular country or time. The fear of that kind of position tended to, to um, move philosophers to this objectivity, this, this stance of, of objectivity that downplayed their historical location. But we have all come to realize that historical location matters a whole lot in what you t tend to pursue, what you tend to find interesting, what you think is important. And so consciousness of that um, then pushes at the boundaries of traditional analytic philosophy. There's a way in which um, the kinds of concerns that American philosophy raises are ones that turn one's attention away from sort of universal principles and towards stuff that's happening on the ground, right, in, 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 in relation. And um, someone who's grown up in the upper Midwest and, um, you know, uh, partly on a farm and this sort of thing, these questions of sort of how you deal with present circumstances are sort of looming ones. And one of the things that emerges immediately in looking at uh, Native traditions is that this concern is shared. Right? This, is, this is sort of, if you, if you step back and sort of say what generally characterizes, at least in the Northeast and probably in the North Central part of, the United, uh, of North America, um, what characterizes the, the native thought as it emerges at the border, it's this concern about the, the land and place and community and how it flourishes sort of against all odds, against all sorts of pressures from the outside. And these are questions that, I mean, came to me sort of early as a result of just living where I lived and talking with the people I talked with and so forth. So, 
so all of this sort of came together in this project uh, that I ended up calling Native Pragmatism, but it's, it's part of a line of concern that has to do with how we understand ourselves in a complex and pluralistic world where among the things which are plural are knowledges or ways of thinking or ways of interacting. Again, I think that from a philosophical standpoint, the real issue here is, is the fact that many philosophers, I think, like to see what they're doing as somehow free of space and time as a, a kind of transcendent activity. So um, it wouldn't make sense to them to think that the kind of things they eat aren't bound by time and place or that their leisure activities aren't bound by time and place. We would say that baseball is an American game even as it gets adopted other places. They think, ah, but not me. I'm saying something for all time, for all places. I think that that's not so. You're saying something which is bound to a particular time and place. It may have relevance beyond that. It may not. That remains to be seen. But, but it, it is a way, I think, of marking that philosophy as a cultural activity. It's not something that takes place in a vacuum. It's something that people do. These are not detached ideas. It's not surprising, I suppose, that, uh, that Sartre, for example, uh, uh, wrote what he wrote when and where he wrote it. Uh, in, uh, uh, and the same is true for, uh, for Emerson, I suppose, and, and, uh, and Dewey. Uh, uh, wonderfully uh, gets excited about Chicago uh, as a as a geographic place. This this place with problems, but problems are are you know waiting for solutions. In, in that sense, I think that pragmatism is a, a kind of quintessentially American philosophy because I think it recognizes that deep historicity of its own philosophizing. Not uniquely American, but I think that it conveys that aspect of American philosophy. The whole focus on James toward last things and consequences is an attempt to sort of recognize that the philosopher is in experience and not just talking about it. I think in my view there is good philosophy and bad philosophy, period. And it doesn't go by nationality or by, uh, by uh, school. Uh, but I've always identified myself strongly in, in as... Uh, in the uh, in the pragmatic tradition, I guess I do see that transcendentalism and pragmatism are the two original uh, American traditions. And one of the things I've been interested in is the way they uh, emerge, from, or the way pragmatism emerges from transcendentalism rather than just departs from it. Um, but I think those are original traditions, though they have their roots in in European thought. Um, and literature, as I've, as I've written about. I don't have much use for the notion of the American novel or for the notion of American philosophy. Um, in, you can teach American philosophy as the sequence of people who read and were influenced by their teachers so that uh, Royce influenced C.I. Lewis, C.I. Lewis influenced Quine, Quine influenced Davidson. You can read American literature as uh, Hemingway having read Dreiser, uh, Bellow having read Hemingway, and so on. There are genealogical sequences to be traced which do tend to stay within national borders. But of course, there are exceptions. There are American novelists and American philosophers on whom the important influences were all European rather than American. Now, what's been characteristic of America, which is why we have this problem of philosophy in America and American philosophy, is just about every uh, position that's ever been thought up is, gets an airing on the American scene. And I would say, by contrast, many other countries are highly, for want of a better word, nationalistic. I mean, French philosophy has a flavor from the beginning, uh, which seems to be, I'm not re ready to, to, to define that, but, but and German philosophy even more. Uh, uh, the, the German tradition is very, quite, quite rigid, and, and the difference between German philosophy and others is very well known. For pragmatism, for example, only very recently is making its way uh, in, into, into Germany, uh, and um, uh, it, it, it has had some influence in France, there's no doubt about that, because of the Anglo-Saxon connection. Um, but uh, it, it, it's a very big subject, and I don't want to dodge that, 
But I have the feeling that, and I say national identity, it's more a cultural matter than, than anything else. Uh, uh, so that um, um, you, you do have these national traditions uh, that go from the early German philosophy from the 15th century on to Hegel has a certain kind of drift uh, to it. And there's an internal dialogue that's very strong. If you go back to the Greeks and their notion of autochthony, that is the, the sense that things grow out of the ground, a culture emerges from the, the space of the land that it's on. Uh, you see that the Greeks were, were quite aware of uh, having philosophy be located in places and have it being tempered by the places from which it comes. But I think that we need to keep urging philosophers to pay attention. I mean, people who do continental philosophy, for example, often forget that they're, they're actually doing philosophy in a particular locale, responding to particular students and circumstances that are completely germane to what they're studying, right? Um, but they're not helping the students make the link. They're not saying, look, you know, I'm, I may be talking about Heidegger, but I'm talking about Heidegger here, right? And it makes a difference. I think that we need to continue to remind philosophers that they're doing philosophy somewhere. Wendell Berry has this great line, you know, everybody has to work and every, play, every, every worker works in a place, and there's no avoiding that. Whether you telecommute or you know, go to a factory or go to a classroom, you're someplace, and that, that conditions the work that you do. There's just no doubt.